Hello. How to control slugs in your garden. I'm Liz Zorab and this is By The Farm. If you're like me and feel like you're always doing battle with the slugs and snails in your garden, this video is for you. The average garden can have around 30,000 slugs and snails in it, so you're unlikely to be able to get rid of them all. Far from just being a nuisance in our gardens, uh, slugs actually play a vital role. Together with lots of other creatures like wood lice, uh, they live on dead and decaying matter and they are basically the gardener's tidier upper. So they are a natural uh, tidier and they will live uh, on any decaying uh, and dead matter. But unfortunately, slugs also like to feast on our tender young plants and they'll have a good old chomp through our bigger plants too. Although I'm going to mostly talk about slugs today, uh, the same applies for snails. And if you're not sure whether you've got lots of slugs or lots of snails in your garden, you can tell by the trail, the silvery trails that they leave behind uh, on the leaves, on walls <laughs> and everywhere else that they go. If it's a continuous uh, silvery line, that's likely to be a slug. And if it's a broken line, that will be a snail where it's gone along a little bit and pause to wait for its house, <laughs> its shell to come with it, its home, uh, and then gone a little bit more and then waited while it takes its shell with it. And there are generally a lot fewer snails in your garden than there are slugs, but you see them uh, more often because snails uh, can very happily uh, sleep and snooze and hide uh, higher up because they've got their shelves to protect them and to prevent them from drying out. And slugs will live underground to a depth of up to six feet so you will see them less during the day because they're down there staying moist and cool and well out of the way. Snails will often hide uh, in the ridges around pots. I'm feeling away here to see if I can find one. Luckily uh, no I can't or maybe not luckily because I actually wanted to demonstrate that. The snails obviously are not taught to perform on cue there are two main things that we can do to reduce the slug problem in our gardens. First of all, you can reduce the number of places they can hide. Keep the grass around your growing beds nice and short. If you let it grow long uh, like this and drape all over the pathways, it's just an invitation for slugs to live and to sleep in the nice, cool, damp conditions that long grass will give them. And when you've tidied up in your garden, whether that's weeding or lifting out old plants, don't just leave them lying around um, in the pathway to rot down. This is just providing slugs with everything they want in terms of something to, uh, something to eat, some shade to stop them drying out from the, from the sun or the wind. And you're also effectively making a mulch uh, to hold the moisture into the ground, which they'll also like. So as long as you tidy up uh, and clear these things away as you go, bit by bit, you'll make it less hospitable for the slugs uh, in your vegetable garden or your fruit garden. And they'll start moving uh, to where they'll do maximum good, and that's in the compost heap. Leaving trays and pots and bags lying around uh, is also an invitation for slugs. They will settle, here we go, underneath them and, uh, and very happily uh, stay moist and comfy. There's a little snail here. So try and make sure you don't leave uh, pots lying around. I'm very lucky to have got away <laughs> with it under that one. Uh, and likewise, uh, if you leave bags compost bags lying around, uh, you may find uh, that they will sleep underneath them. If possible, uh, try to avoid watering in the evenings. If you water in the morning, the water will have drained right away and you won't allow those slugs such easy passage uh, back to your plants. If you'd like to find out a little more about how I garden here and why I garden here, my new book, Grounded, uh, is available to pre-order. It'll be published in the spring and I'll leave a link uh, on the screen and in the video description below. So once you've eliminated uh, as many as possible of their hiding places, uh, the next thing to do is to think about uh, the plants that you're planting. 
so I very often start plants uh, in modules and in pots and just allow them to grow uh, as big and healthy as I can without them getting pot bound before I plant them out and that way if a slug or a snail does get at them uh, and they eat part of them hopefully the other part will then survive the attack whereas if you plant your plants out when they're very tiny a few mouthfuls from a slug and they may have destroyed your plant completely. Another way to protect your plants is to use a barrier method and this can be uh, anything from eggshells to grit and coffee grinds, copper tape, there's a whole host of things that you can put uh, in a ring around your plants to try and uh, reduce the amount that the slugs will travel to your plants and eat them. A piece of research carried out for the Royal Horticultural Society tested the effectiveness of these different uh, mulches or, or barrier methods that you could put around plants and they found very little was effective. But other pieces of research say that, uh, that the copper tape might be very effective. So that's using uh, a, a ring or a line of, of copper tape around your plants. And I know that Hugh Richards likes to use bramble, uh, lengths of uh, bramble, so that's blackberry with its very thorny sides. And you could use rose cuttings as well, uh, laid down around your plants to uh, deter the slugs uh, from travelling across to your plants that you want to keep. The problem with that is, uh, as I said earlier, slugs live up to six feet below the ground. So they're not necessarily going to come up on the outside of your barrier and not travel across it. There's a very real chance that they will come up right next to your plant on the inside of that barrier and help themselves to your food. If you actually want to pick off the slugs yourself, you need to come out just after dark, bring a torch <laughs> and a bucket and you'll be able to collect them from under pots, uh, on the pathways, on leaves, they'll be on your plants and you can physically take them off put them in a bucket and then you can either uh, release them into some woodland, you could put them into your compost heap, although bear in mind they're still in your garden then, uh, or if you want to get rid of them uh, completely, you can pop them into your freezer um, and then bin them the next day. It's a lovely warm day today and the farmer uh, in the field next door is ploughing and so you can probably hear the tractor noises going. It's supposed to be lovely all week, so I'm really pleased that he's managing to get some stuff done because apparently the week afterwards, the weather will turn and it will become distinctly autumnal. Anyway, back to slugs. One of the other really effective things that you can do uh, is to encourage predators, the natural predators of slugs, into your garden. So everything from uh, certain types of birds uh, and hedgehogs and frogs and toads frogs and toads you can do by having a small wildlife pond in your garden. So this is one with still water. It doesn't even need to be very big. A washing up bowl would work as long as you put something like a large stone in the side of it to give them something to, uh, to jump onto or to crawl onto as they're getting in and out of the water. The more diverse range of plants that you grow in your garden, the more likelihood you are to have a wide variety of birds visiting. I love watching thrushes uh, when they get hold of a snail and they bang it onto uh, a stone or onto the ground and try and break the shell uh, to get the snail out. It's an incredibly clever thing for them to do. But lots of other birds uh, will just grab a slug and a snail as and when they can. And you can encourage hedgehogs into your garden. Even the smallest of town gardens usually has a corner that you could put a hedgehog house in. One of the difficult things is that the very environment that will attract the predators uh, is the same environment that will attract the slugs. So a pile of leaves in the corner uh, and a few sticks, undisturbed, it's likely to become home uh, to a hedgehog, but it will also become home to slugs. And that's what will attract the hedgehog there. But hedgehogs are great. They, they eat <laughs> slugs and snails and beetles and all sorts of things. Uh, so they will eat a vast amount of those. And you could also use a biological control like nematodes. You buy uh, a small powder packet which you uh, mix with water and you water onto the ground. And nematodes are naturally occurring, they're in our soil and what you're doing is adding uh, a vast quantity of them uh, in, a, in a smaller area which boosts their numbers. So the nematodes then live on the slugs uh, and the slugs will be killed that way. I'm not sure that in this garden that would work for us. I have used nematodes once in the polytunnel 
and I just got really uncomfortable with it. I quite like to leave the natural balance uh, of the numbers of slugs and snails here. Um, yes, they're a nuisance. Yes, they eat the plants, but they also feed uh, the birds, the frogs, the toads and the hedgehogs, the things that I do want in the garden. So you have to find a way that's right for you. I know lots of people use nematodes uh, on a very regular basis, very successfully. As you've seen, uh, I'm not very good at making sure the grass is kept short or even um, picking up piles of uh, dead leaves and weeds that I've pulled out of the ground. I am rather prone to uh, picking a weed and just dropping it on the ground. And some of that is because uh, I use chop and drop method of weeding, so I just chop the weeds and, and drop them onto the soil. Um, so that they break down there and feed the ground and it's become sort of so habitual just to drop them um, I've become quite bad at picking them up in places that I really uh, should be picking them up like the pathways uh, between the veg beds. My first line of defence against these gastropods uh, are the ducks. They are amazing slug and snail detectives and during the uh, winter I allow them into the vegetable garden and the food forest and during the spring, uh, I shut them out of the vegetable garden, but they can stay in the food forest area. And then uh, as the fruits start forming on the trees and uh, particularly on the currant bushes, I shut them out of the food forest for a little while until those currants uh, have been harvested. And then I let them back in again. And as much as possible, I allow them to roam uh, right through the veg garden during the late autumn, the winter and the very early spring. Anything that I don't want eaten, nibbled or stood on, I have to net because they're quite nimble and they will jump up onto the veg beds, stomp over everything. Uh, and they won't necessarily be eating the vegetables, but they will be uh, dibbling through the soil, uh, looking for those slugs and those snails. Uh, and they'll uproot plants while they're doing that. But I'm really pleased with how effective they've been. Uh, there have been noticeably uh, fewer slugs uh, in the veg garden this year. Or maybe they haven't, but I haven't seen them. So as a gardener, uh, I find slugs a pain in the proverbial. Um, I want them here to do their job uh, in the compost heaps and on any leaves that have uh, fallen and I haven't scooped up. But I don't want them to eat the food and the plants that I'm growing. And then again, I do want them because I want them as food for the hedgehogs, the birds, frogs and toads that I want in the garden. So I'm just beginning to find a balance here. One of the things I do get asked very often is whether using so many wood chips in my garden uh, encourages slugs. Now I don't know the answer to that, but what I do know is if they're eating this, they're not filling up on my plants. So there you go, my thoughts on slugs. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up or leave a comment or both. And if you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing to the channel.